welcome back to the video and I just wanted to take a second to talk about failure failure in a project and and how it affects kind of me and and uh, why you haven't seen a lot on this antenna let's go ahead and get into it I lit a cigar because I think that kind of helps me talk to the camera and I don't know I just like gesturing so I lit a Roma Craft cigar I really like this cigar um, I put the name of it in the description I can't even pronounce these wacky names sometimes but um, back on topic here I failed and had many stumbling points during this project um, something good did come out of the project and I'm gonna show it to y'all here in a minute but it's okay to stumble and, and it's like the stumbling is easy like oh I, I did that wrong let me fix it I did this wrong let me fix it um, but several times I took this antenna to the park twice to activate it and I had something go wrong and it was really discouraged me from the project and the $20 antenna it was a great idea and I think there's still something there I just need to sell this because I, uh, it's just holding me up on and get me a little down. I'm like, I can do it, I can do it. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to show you me building the antenna. The build is still very good. There's a lot of good information, but whatever measurements I tell you, throw it out the window. They're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. And that's why um, <laughs> that this project has just stumbled so much. And it got to the point where I really want to do it again. So I'm going to just show it for now. Let me show you the build video. I'll come back and talk to you about it when it's done. Welcome back to my humble garage. Today we're going to be building the um, dipole antenna for the $20 antenna challenge. And I'm taking a little bit of a different take than my planning video because what I actually did find for the extension cables, which is much better than the extension cables I got from my own garage. I'm kind of disappointed I'm going to cut into them. I have three cables instead of two cables because initially I was just going to get indoor extension cords on what I found on Amazon Prime after doing a little bit more Googling and I couldn't find the cables that I picked out in the video before. A outdoor three cable extension cable was we're going to use. So uh, let's get to it. I have two 25 foot cables. My plan is I am going to take this cable, let's use this one because it's already open, and we're going to cut the ends off of one of these. Now which end do we want to keep for the main section of the um, dipole? And I'm thinking the female end because it's clean, um, There's elements can't get in here, and just having that just sitting in the uh, end, I think it's kind of messy. So this is going to be a receiving end, and this is going to be the end we're going to plug into for the element extension from 17 meters to 20 meters. And what I'm going to do is cut one foot off of this end on both sides, and then uh, I'm going to take the rest of the cable from here and solder it back on to get that 20 meter foot extension. The second question is, which of the wires we're going to keep intact to run the antenna with? Um, and I've been thinking about that. We have three choices. We have the ground, which I have another idea for the ground, so we're going to leave the ground alone. And then we have two of the other power um, wires. And I'm thinking it will be easy to use the large end of the plug for the main element that's going to stay in the wire and the small end we're going to be taking out. I hope I can figure that out with the use of a voltmeter. Yay! And I, I don't know how easy extracting that wires are going to be, but um, we're going to give it a shot. I think we're ready to do this. I think I thought enough about it. Let's do it, let's do it. So let's go ahead and measure out from the male end one foot and get them completely cut. And I chose one foot because it makes the math easy if I, we just start with a foot here and take away a foot there instead of some other number. So one foot's kind of easy. Next, I want to take these one foot sections and figure out which wire inside here is which for the uh, plugs. I think it's going to be fairly easy. I'm going to guess and uh, write your comments below if I, I think I'm going to guess right. Um, ground is going to be green. The big one, I'm going to call that positive and that's going to be black. And the small one, I'm going to call negative and it's going to be white. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull these apart a little bit and put them on the voltmeter for connectivity and see if I'm right. Ha <laughs> ha 
with that sound, I'm right. So we are gonna be keeping the black cable in place with all of these extension cables, and we're gonna be pulling the white one, and um, we're gonna do something, like I said, special with that um, green one. Let's try to figure out how to pull that white one. I uh, cut into both of the 25 foot sections of the cable, cut the white one, and I tried with one, several different ways of pulling it through with vice grips, but ended up just crutching and snapping. So unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to cut through all of the cable to just get the white wire out. I was hoping I could just pull it easily, but that's not the case. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Wow, so I cut it a little slip, and then was able to, after I got a good um, amount, just to grab and tear right through the plastic outer shielding. That was fun. Um, so discovered that the wires are twisted together inside the cord. Surprising. Didn't think they would do that because that actually adds more wire and more expense. So I thought they were just gonna be straight. That's why I thought you could straight pull them. And yeah, that seemed to work quite well. So we're gonna go ahead and do it again. I think I figured out the technique on this. You start unwinding it for a bit till you, the wire gets annoying to keep pulling through. And then we're going to wind it up in a little circle thing. And then we're just gonna keep passing it through under end over end so that we can go faster. Um, this does take a little bit because it's a lot of wire, 25 feet or, you know, 24 feet. Boom, done. And we want to be careful with this end because this end is the end that we're going to go and connect to our banana clip or later we're going to solder into an actual BNC connector. Um, and then this other end is the end that is the plug going to go into and this is where we're going to solder the additional black extension. So when we plug it in, then that's going to give us our 20 meters. All right, I went ahead and measured our cord on the ground. It came out to be 24 feet, four inches. So I'm gonna round that down just to be a 24. And we need a 26 foot uh, first element length for the 17 meter antenna. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two feet and solder it on to each end of the wires here. And then that will give us the 26 feet for two wires. All right, we're gonna see if this works. Feels so wrong doing this. Shove that in that end, the green wire. Yeah, boy. Ha, 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 ha. Connectivity, yeah. Perfect. So, the reason why now I have two wires here coming out of this end. This end's gonna be plugged into the um, connector that's gonna run to the radio. I need to have them the same length, so I'm gonna cut these and solder these two ends together. Um, probably a good inch there. And um, this end is gonna be the other end. So why I have two lines here, it's gonna be a fan dipole. This green line, we're gonna cut it to about seven feet. And I need to look up those numbers. It's just off of my head. I think it's around seven to 10 feet. We're gonna have a six meter element on it. And then this first section that when it ends, a 20 meter element. And finally, with the last part we're gonna cut and make, it's gonna be the 20 meter element, and that's gonna also give us 10 meters. So we're gonna have 10, 20, 17, and six. That's four bands on this fan dipole antenna. Ha <laughs> ha, fan dipole linked antenna. A lot of that is still great information. That's why I left it there. Um, the cutting of the antenna, the using the extension cord and the three wires for a fan dipole, brilliant. Um, but the issue, what came up with it is, um, I have a connector. Let me, let me go ahead and get it. The bag of connectors. You gotta have your connectors because you're always gonna need an adapter. What I started with is this banana clip. And I thought I would be able to open it up and it has these little holes right here to shove in a wire and then you clamp it down, maybe bend back a little bit and clamp it down and it holds it really tight in place. However, with this power cord, and when I twisted the ends together because we are doing a fan dipole, oh, that was the other thing that I discovered I think I was doing wrong. When you twist the ends together, both elements are equal. I think it's putting power out on half and half. It's a cool idea, but not right now. Um, so I still, when I only put one of the end stranded ends of the wire through there, I didn't quite clamp it down good enough and uh, it was just falling. 
So um, that was a failed attempt and a failed activation because I wanted to activate all this stuff. So, so my solution to that was, since I just bought some of these Wagyu connectors, I went ahead and put ring terminals around this that you can clamp down pretty good and they're not going anywhere. Then soldered a little, I don't know what gauge wire, solid core wire right there. And then I took the antenna, the Wagyu connector, put it there, boom, solid connection. Plus, with this build, since I was tuning it from the um, center, I could undo this side, pop the wire out, cut it to length, put it back in, snap it down, and I'm ready to go. Pretty cool idea. I really like this. And this was easy to do. I just needed uh, the Wagyu connector, a ring terminal, boom, done. And when you're done, this itself is a pretty cool connection that you just throw up an antenna real fast don't have to worry about any soldering after you solder the ring connector on there. Another failing point in this project, um, the second time it was at field day. I brought this antenna, I was going to tune it at field day. I went down, I left the uh, lodge and I found a nice quiet place by the lake and I set up the radio and I set up the antenna, threw this in the tree and I found that my, I had some cold solder joints. Thankfully, Robert, uh, Digital Rancher Robert, had a soldering iron. He came out and helped me solder this together a little bit more securely. The other connector is fine. I just had one, um, and we were good to go then, which all those are perfectly good stumbling points. They happen in every project. And, and the, the last point where I kind of made the big mistake here is I used my measurements for the end-fed half-wave uh, antenna that I did and the issue with that is it is a end fed antenna that means that half wave is from the whole half wave of the antenna well when I did a center fed dipole I forgot that the end fed is the length of the wire positive and negative it's just fed from the end when you center fed it, you take that measure and you half it on each side, because then you have a positive end and then you have a negative end. And at that point, when I realized that a, uh, it, it was just kind of crushing, because then you know the, the soldering I did here was kind of pointless, the, the extensions I did here was kind of pointless, um, and uh, all this work I did was kind of, it, it can be probably salvaged, but been thinking about it, I could have done this a whole differently. I didn't really need the length unless I was trying to do a 40 meter antenna. I could probably get away with these two extension cord connections just on their own and not have to worry about cutting which end and that end and things. And I could probably cut this down to a good 20 meter, 17 meter and a six meter fan dipole that does not need any extensions. And since I already cut one of the wires after all this come to realization, um, it's just kind of crushed me and then I got to start again and that was a lot of work I did. So I'm just going to put this whole project on hold. Um, I might in the end just cut it all and use it for wire for another antenna later. And I think that would be a good use of this. And if I do circle back to this and maybe the $20 antenna build will pop up again somewhere else, I'll give this a shot. But think good things that came out of this. This connector worked well. Um, little hiccups, but there's always a hiccup on the project and they're, and they're easy to overcome. If you hit a stumbling point, sometimes take a step back, rethink and co attack at it again. Um, but, to end this on a positive note, I am gonna go ahead and fix Sapphire to get that radio working. Here's that footage. Thank y'all for watching. That came out beautiful. We're gonna do that again. There we go, and boom! <laughs> And one of the final steps here, I'm gonna put the fuse back in. Because when I was working on it, I didn't want it to find another fuse or sort it out again to find another fuse. <laughs> All right, hopefully for the final time. <laughs> well, there we go. 
we can end the video on a permanent fix for Sapphire. She's happy and up and ready to go. And um, I'm glad she is able to run nicely and I can get on the radio again. And maybe I can participate in Jason's challenge. <laughs> we'll see about the repeater challenge. But um, that's my video for today. Thank you all for watching. And I um, hope this has helped you all uh, get over some failures or setbacks and projects and uh, find maybe find something a smaller, smaller success somewhere that you can end the day on a good note. As always, y'all, go forth and conquer. And I'm kind of disappointed I'm going to cut up to him. All right. So this audio, you know, like Fran and ugh. there we go.